Welcome to the PSV Sports Workshop on how to putt in disco. My name is Sylvan Verrier and I'm the fitness coordinator at CFPS Wildlands. And today I'm going to give you some tips and try to improve your skills in the act of putting in the sport of disco. First things first, we're going to discuss what is disc golf? So if you've heard of regular golf before, it's very similar. Except for instead of having a golf ball and a golf club, you have a variety of frisbees or discs. Now, it's a little bit different than just regular ultimate frisbee or just playing pass with a friend. In terms of, there are pars, par threes, par fours, Precision is specifically key in disc golf because you have to get the disc in the baskets. And, but it is, other than that, the exact same as regular ball golf. Disc golf, just like regular golf, requires you to get a certain distance before you get from the tee pad to the basket or to the hole. So for example, in regular golf, you have your driver, which is your bigger club. It'll send the ball further, and then you have your irons, your wedges, which is for that sort of middle of the pack distance, and then your putters, which will be more precise and have that shorter range. For disc golf, it's very similar. You have different discs based on what distance you want to cover. So you'll have drivers, so those discs will have a wider rim. They'll go a lot further than other discs such as fairway drivers or mid-ranges. And finally, they'll go much further than the putter. So the putter disc is very similar to the driving disc if you're not entirely sure what disc golf is all about. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna go over a couple of techniques and a couple of tips to improve your ability to do the putt. So whatever disc you currently have or whatever frisbee you currently have at home will definitely suffice. And all of the things we're gonna cover today will be able to be applied with what you have. So you've thrown your discs onto the fairway, and you've thrown your disc onto the green. Finally, you're at the putting green, and whether you're five feet away or you're 30 feet away, it's very important that you're able to make those shots consistently to lower your score, to beat your friends, or to beat your own personal best, and just to overall have a better time. So that's why practicing putting is very important. Because it may be, oh yeah, I'm very close to the basket, it'll be quite easy at this point. But in reality, when you are playing, there's that added bit of pressure and that short distance needs to be dialed in prior to being on the course just to increase the chance of making that shot. Next, we're going to talk about number three, the different types of putting. So there's a wide variety of different types. We're just going to go over the two main ones. So the first one is a spin putt. So as the name indicates, you're going to be really spinning the disc into the basket. Now this putt is usually preferred for if you're going for further distance or if there is maybe a tree or some branches that are sort of coming up from above and you're forced to keep the disc nice and low. So if you're in a low ceiling position, as they say, then you're able to propel the disc forward um, and it's more of a wrist action. So for the spin putt, what you want to be looking for is 
You want to have your thumb to start facing away from you at the 90 degrees. So your wrist is caught. And then as you propel the disc forward, you basically open up your hand so that small movement of that wrist extension propels the disc very straight. And although it is quite hard to master, and it's definitely the most more advanced way of cutting, once you do have it dialed in, it is very accurate because your wrist extension basically limits the amount of range that you can miss. So for example, if I'm aiming towards the camera and my wrist is cocked, and then as I release it, there's no way that the disc will go to my right because my wrist will only be doing that motion. So I can miss left, 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 and then I can miss any more to the right. And then the disc will go, ideally, if I release it at the perfect time, dead straight. Like I mentioned, this putt is specifically for if you're looking for a bit more distance while still keeping the height of the disc low for its entire flight. The other type of putt is the push putt. So unlike the spin putt, where we see a lot of wrist action, for the push putt, we still have a little bit of that wrist movement just to propel the disc forward, but the majority of the power is coming from our arm. So usually your arm will stay relatively straight, or maybe with a slight bend, but it's more the movement from the shoulder. You'll bring the disc down, towards your lower body propel the disc forward. So as opposed to bringing the disc straight back on that lower sort of chest height and keeping it there for the spin putt, for the push putt, it allows for more of a up and down motion and you're pushing the disc towards the basket. So for this one, it's going to be a lot harder to keep it lower, so if you don't have that low ceiling, then you can really get some distance by setting the disc a little bit higher, and ideally you're still able to keep that wrist nice and locked in towards the basket, just so you're minimizing your variables for errors. And we're going to go over a couple of different common mistakes that happen uh, later on in the video. So number four, we're going to talk about different stances. So there's two major stances that you'll find, it's whatever is most comfortable for yourself, and it could also have an impact on what type of cut that you do. But you can basically do a split stance. So for the split stance, like you're doing a split squat, um, or if you're doing that cross-country skiing motion. So you have one foot in front of the other, and you want to have the majority of your weight on your front foot. And then based on what type of putt you're doing, it could look like a spin putt, where you draw it straight back towards your chest. Now those are the two extremities in terms of how you can stand 
cutting. You can stand for whatever is most comfortable for yourself. That is definitely the best way to stand. But those are the two main things. So on to number five, we're just gonna go over a couple of common mistakes. And if you work on avoiding these as you learn to throw the disc into the basket on the putting green, it's really gonna help you out in the long run. So the follow through is the first one. It's very common in most sports, whether you're swinging a bat, doing a basketball free throw, you always want to be following through to some degree. For putting, for the follow through, it basically ensures that your arm is at the proper height and you're not retracting early. So you're sending the disc forward appropriately and how you actually want to. So what a lack of follow through would look like would be if I did So as I threw the disc, I'm also four feet away so my odds are still good. But when I throw it, I quickly retract it back. And that's what I want to avoid doing. So instead, after I've thrown the disc into the basket, I want to hold that position just to really emphasize that forward momentum. The next common mistake is having a too fast arm speed. So regardless of how I'm standing or what type of putt I'm doing, I want to try to be as smooth as I can. So when I draw the disc back, I'm not, I'm not rushing the disc out. Okay, I'm trying to stay calm and collected. So whatever speed I draw the disc back in my pullback, I want to try to mimic that with my actual cup. So it should look more something like this. The next mistake is not aiming at a specific zone. So again, if I'm putting at a further distance, the target is quite small, but if I'm still aiming for just the general basket, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. So to avoid that, you probably notice that on the basket there's chain links. So I want to try to aim for one specific chain link, and that will narrow my focus point, so that even if I miss that one chain link, I'm still going to probably get another chain link that's relatively close to it. So a good rule of thumb is if you were a right hand thrower, the majority of discs will fade to the left. So what that means is at the end of the flight, the disc is, is going to want to sort of turn over and go to the left. So aiming slightly right of the center pole sort of finding a chain that is located there is really going to help with consistent successful thoughts. And you also want to make sure that you're not aiming too high on the chain link or too low. So about the middle of that. Another common mistake is the arm height. So if I'm releasing my disc here, or if I'm releasing my disc up here, then it's gonna lower the chance of the disc going in the basket because I'm not really setting it up for success. So usually around shoulder height is a good rule of thumb. And if you just stick your arm straight out, you'll be able to see that the disc will be aligned with the chains, which again, based on how far you are, may slightly vary, but you don't want to be releasing the disc anywhere below your hips, um, and then generally as well, anywhere above your shoulders. 
That's going to really help with your consistency as well, as long as you pick one general sort of height that you want your arm to be at that finish. It's going to help with your consistency as well. So those are some common mistakes to try to avoid. And lastly, the thing that's going to help you the most in becoming more successful in your putting is just practicing. So if you play once every two weeks with your friends, and then after a couple months, you realize that you're not getting better at all, it's probably because you didn't practice. So try to get out to a field. You can even use a soccer goal post or a tree and use that as your target with whatever discs you have. And just focus on one thing for your session. So for example, next time I'm going to go, I'm going to focus on my arm speed. So as I draw the disc back, as I put it forward, I'm going to make sure that that speed is nice and smooth. Or what I'm going to practice on is my stance. I'm going to only focus on doing one stance because I really want to master that one uh, just to really be able to see some improvement. So get out there and practice as much as you can. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. If you have not played disc golf, then I would recommend you going to your local sports goods store and picking up one of these frisbees or discs and trying it out. It's a ton of fun. It's free. And the discs will cost around $10. And there's a lot of free courses out there. So enjoy. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Happy Pumpkin!